The Raymonds made the biggest mistake of their alien lives when they killed eight-year-old Kelly Jackson. They thought they could scare Earth into submission, but instead, they unleashed the fury of all humankind and the galaxy's largest war fleet, hell-bent on vengeance. It started when a massive Riemann warship suddenly appeared in Earth's orbit. There was no warning, no hail, just an unprovoked attack. Earth's satellites were the first targets, vaporized in seconds. Then, the defense systems guarding major cities. Panic and chaos swept the planet. Millions watched in horror as a deadly energy beam surged from the alien vessel and slammed into the heart of Chicago. In an instant, the city was gone, reduced to ash and rubble. Among the dead was Kelly Jackson, an innocent eight-year-old girl. Her father, Alliance Fleet Commander Dylan Jackson, could only watch helplessly from his command ship as his daughter and millions of others perished. Grief quickly turned to rage. At an emergency UN meeting, Earth's top scientists made a chilling discovery from tracking the Riemann ship's trajectory. This was no random strike, but a deliberate hit. For some inexplicable reason, the Riemanns had intentionally targeted and killed Dylan's daughter. Intercepted alien transmissions cryptically referred to Kelly as the catalyst and called the attack a preemptive strike. But against what? Dylan's anguished pleas for war met resistance at first. Many wanted to negotiate with the aliens, to understand their motives and make peace. But Dylan would have none of it. Fueled by wrath over his daughter's murder, he overruled them all and revealed Earth's most closely guarded secret, a massive war fleet equipped with advanced alien-derived technology. Technology painstakingly reverse-engineered since Roswell and kept hidden away for this very day. Left with no choice, the UN voted for war. As the largest armada in human history launched with Dylan in command, he made a solemn vow. His little girl's death would not be in vain. He would hunt down those responsible to the ends of the universe if needed, and he would make them pay. Earth's survival, humanity's survival, depended on it. But as the fleet ventured into the dark unknown, grim questions haunted Dylan's mind. Who were these Raymonds, and why slaughter an innocent child? What did it mean that Kelly was some catalyst? Did humans actually stand a chance against a ruthless star empire? Or was this a suicide mission of revenge? Only one thing was certain now. The Raymonds had no idea of the fire they had just lit in humankind's heart. They would soon learn that when you mess with one of us, you mess with all of us. And galaxies will burn before we stop fighting back. Icy persistence gripped Dylan's heart as he gazed out the viewport of his battered flagship. Earth's mighty armada, hidden by stolen alien cloaking tech, surged through the shimmering maw of the wormhole into Raymond's space. Rima Prime, the heart of the enemy empire, loomed ahead, a mottled orb of gray and crimson. All ships, prepare for assault, Dylan barked into the fleet-wide comm. Target their military bases and government centers. Let's hit these bastards where it hurts. His crew scrambled to action stations as Dylan's fingers clenched around the arms of his command chair. A storm of missiles, railgun slugs, and particle beams erupted from the human fleet, tearing into Rayma Prime's defenses before they could react. Fireballs blossomed across the planet's surface as the bombardment raised bases and vaporized government complexes. The Remans reeled under the onslaught, their ships scattered and defenses in chaos. But the Remans struck back with a vengeance. Like angry hornets from a kicked nest, swarms of autonomous attack drones poured from launch bays, blotting out the stars. The robot swarm engulfed the human fleet's fighter screens. Dozens of Terran ships vanished in blossoms of flame as the drone's quantum cannons found their marks. Dylan's ship shuddered as a drone's antimatter missile slammed into its hull. Consoles exploded on the bridge, showering the crew with sparks. Shields down to 15%, an officer shouted over the klaxons. Hull breach on decks 7 and 12. Through gritted teeth, Dylan knew they couldn't last. The Riemann counterattack was too fierce, their drone swarms too overwhelming. All ships, fall back, he ordered, hating each word. Regroup at the staging point. We can't win this, not here, not now. Battered and bloodied, the remnants of the once proud Earth fleet limped away from Rima Prime to lick their wounds. At a hidden asteroid base, 
Dylan paced his ready room, seething, when his intel officer burst in. Sir, Emperor Odin has put a massive bounty on your head for attacking his capital. Dylan barely heard him, his mind whirling with ugly thoughts of Odin's serpentine face. Then the officer added, Odin's also blaming Earth for the war. He's saying we're dangerous and unpredictable, that we need to be contained or wiped out. And sir, the galactic races are starting to believe him. They're siding with the Remens. A cold spike of fear pierced Dylan's wrath. If the galaxy turned on them, Earth was finished. A call from Fleetcom confirmed his worst fears. The UN is considering surrender, Admiral John said, her face etched with worry. They think if we bargain now, we can still negotiate for peace. No! Dylan pounded his fist on the desk, making Jean flinch. There can be no peace, not with Odin. He's a lying snake. He'll pretend to bargain, then stab us in the back. Surrender means enslavement or extermination, nothing else. Chan bit her lip. What then? What's our plan? A cold, ruthless scheme took form in Dylan's grief-addled mind. We go for the head of the snake. We capture or kill Odin himself, cut off the head, and the body dies. A glimmer of hope sparked in John's eyes. A commando raid. Dylan nodded grimly. I'll lead it myself. Under cover of darkness, Dylan and his hand-picked band of elite commandos infiltrated Rama Prime. They struck like lightning, blasting into Odin's sleek obsidian palace. Room by room they fought, leaving a trail of Riemann corpses, until at last they cornered Odin himself in his throne room. Surrender, you piece of alien filth, Dylan growled, leveling his plasma rifle at Odin's head. But the Raymond Emperor only laughed, a hollow, mocking sound. You poor stupid ape. You have no idea what you've done, do you? Shut up, Dylan snarled. I know you murdered my daughter. Your daughter? Odin smiled a razor-sharp smile. Your daughter was the catalyst, human. An anomaly, born once in a billion years. She had the power to unite the galaxy's fractured races, and end Raymond's supremacy forever. I could not allow that. White-hot rage exploded behind Dylan's eyes. His finger tightened on the trigger. But before he could fire, Odin's words stopped him cold. How do you think we found her, Commander? How do you think we knew she was the catalyst? We have seen her coming for generations, foreseen it in the ancient prophecies. I did what I had to do for the survival of my species. As would you. Liar! Pain and fury battled in Dylan's heart. He wanted to blast this smug alien to watch him die, but some small lost part of him also burned to know the truth. Why, Kelly? Why my daughter? Odin make a choking sound. It took Dylan a moment to realize he was laughing. Oh, the irony. She could have united us all in peace until you avenged her in war. You did exactly as I planned. Now the galaxy will see humans as the monsters you are. Something inside Dylan snapped. He lunged at Odin, plasma rifle forgotten. His hands found the Riemann's neck and squeezed with all his grief and rage. They rolled across the throne room floor in a desperate, clawing struggle. Odin's tail lashed and his claws raked Dylan's face, but the human's fury was unstoppable. Dylan wrenched and twisted until he heard the crack of Odin's neck snapping. The Riemann Emperor shuddered and went limp. Panting, Dylan stumbled to his feet over Odin's corpse. His men watched in stunned silence. Then a wet, choking laugh made them all freeze. On the floor, Odin fixed Dylan with a dying, triumphant gaze. You fool, the Raymond Emperor rasped. Did you think this was my only plan? His eyes gleamed with mad victory. My armada is already at your earth. You've lost everything. Horror turned Dylan's blood to ice. He stabbed a finger at his comm officer. Raise the fleet, now! But when the fleet answered, the news was a nightmare made real. Sir, the wormhole back to Seoul. It's mined. The officer reported in a shaking voice. The Raymonds must have laid them behind us. And there's more. 
A massive Raymond fleet is headed for Earth. Without us there. The words trailed off. He didn't need to finish. They all knew what it meant. Earth was defenseless. Billions would die. And it was all Dylan's fault. For a long moment, Dylan stood motionless, the weight of his failure crashing down on him. Odin's corpse grinned up at him in silent mockery. He had played right into the Reman's hands, let his rage and grief blind him to the true threat. And now his people, his world, would pay the price. No. Dylan's mind focused. He would not let it end like this. He had one card left to play, one desperate, unthinkable chance to save humanity, even if it damned him forever. He opened a fleet-wide channel, forcing steel into his voice. All ships, set course for Earth. Prepare for wormhole transit. His crew traded shocked looks. But sir, his navigator protested, the mines, we'll never make it through. Dylan silenced him with a glare that could melt neutronium. He knew the odds. He knew it was suicide. But he would not, could not, abandon Earth. Not while one human still breathed. We'll make it through, he said, with a calm he did not feel. We have to. His next words were the hardest he had ever spoken. All ships, prepare to detonate your drive cores on my mark. In the stunned silence that followed, he explained his mad plan. They would overload their engines, turning their ships into gigaton-yield nuclear bombs. They would dive straight into the minefields, sacrificing themselves to clear the way for a remnant of the fleet to get through. Those lucky few would make a last stand against the Raymonds at Earth, buying time for the planetary defenses to mobilize. It was a devil's bargain, trading a million lives for billions. But if it gave humanity a chance, even the slimmest chance... It has been an honor serving with you all, Dylan said. Now let's go save our world. World. Dylan's words hung heavy in the air as the fleet split into two groups. His second-in-command, Admiral Chen, saluted grimly. We'll hold the line, sir. Give them hell. Dylan nodded, throat tight. He watched Chen's ships peel off to face the incoming Riemann reinforcements. Then he turned his attention to the swirling, unstable nebula ahead. All ships, form up tight. We're going in. The nebula engulfed them in a maelstrom of cosmic dust and ionized gas. Navigation systems went haywire. Ships' hulls groaned under the strain. Sir, we've lost contact with the intrepid and valiant, an officer reported. Before Dylan could respond, something massive loomed out of the nebula. It looked like a cross between a jellyfish and an oil slick, kilometers wide. Evasive action, Dylan barked. Too late. The creature's tendrils lashed out, enveloping two frigates. The ship's hulls dissolved without difficulty. More creatures appeared. The fleet scattered, firing blindly into the chaos. Dylan's flagship shuddered as something impacted the hull. Hull breach, deck seven, someone shouted. Dylan gripped his chair as the ship bucked. He saw fear in his crew's eyes, heard the muttered curses. Sir, maybe we should turn back his exo suggested. This is suicide. We push on, Dylan growled. Earth is counting on us. But doubt gnawed at him as more ships fell to the nebula's dangers. Meanwhile, at the wormhole, Admiral Chen's outnumbered force met the Riemann onslaught. Railguns spat hypervelocity rounds. Missiles streaked across space. Ships on both sides vanished in silent explosions. Chen's flagship rocked as a Riemann beam sliced through its shields. Status report. Shields at 20%, Admiral. We can't take much more of this. Chen set his jaw. Neither can they. All ships concentrate fire on their flagship. We'll take that bastard with us. His fleet complied, pouring everything they had into one massive salvo. The Riemann flagship's shields failed. Its hull cracked open like an egg. But in its death throes, the alien ship fired one last shot. It caught Chen's bridge dead center. In an instant, the admiral and his command staff were vaporized. The battle devolved into chaos as Earth's defenders, now leaderless, fought on in desperation. Dylan's battered fleet finally emerged from the nebula. They limped toward Earth at maximum speed, their numbers halved. 
As they neared the Sol system, Dylan's blood ran cold. The Riemann Armada was already there, raining death on his homeworld. Earth's orbital defenses were in flames. No, Dylan whispered. We're too late. Then his tactical officer spoke up. Sir, we still have the EMP cannon. It could disable their entire fleet. Dylan's mind raced. The EMP would save Earth from destruction, but at a terrible cost. It would fry every electronic device on the planet, plunging humanity into a new dark age. He closed his eyes, seeing Kelly's face. Do it, he ordered. Fire the EMP. A wave of electromagnetic energy washed over Earth and the Riemann fleet. Alien ships went dark, colliding with each other or burning up in the atmosphere. But on the surface, the lights went out. Power grids failed. Planes fell from the sky. The entire planet went silent. In the days that followed, Dylan walked through the ruins of what was once New York City. Some hailed him as the savior of Earth. Others cursed him for destroying their way of life. As he grappled with the consequences of his choice, a coded transmission reached him. The message spoke of ancient prophecies, galactic upheavals, and a coming darkness that made the Riemann threat pale in comparison. Dylan read the final lines with growing dread. The catalyst was only the beginning. The true war is yet to come. He looked up at the stars, no longer twinkling through the haze of a wounded atmosphere. Whatever was coming, humanity would face it in the dark. And somehow, he had to find a way to... Dylan stared at the decoded message, his legs shaking. He gathered a small team of his most trusted officers and set a course for the coordinates buried in the transmission. Their journey took them far beyond charted space. Navigating treacherous asteroid fields and unpredictable solar flares, they pushed their battered ships to the limit. After weeks of travel, they arrived at a nondescript planet orbiting a dim red dwarf. I'm picking up faint energy readings from the surface, reported Lieutenant Chen, hunched over her sensor console. Definitely artificial, but well shielded. Dylan nodded grimly. Take us in. They found the entrance to the facility hidden beneath a mountain ridge. As they approached on foot, a section of rock face slid away, revealing a gleaming metal door. It opened with a pneumatic hiss. Inside, they were met by a diverse group of aliens. Some species Dylan recognized, others completely foreign. An avian being with iridescent feathers stepped forward. Welcome, Commander Hayes, it trilled. We've been expecting you. The alien scientists led Dylan and his team through winding corridors filled with advanced equipment. They arrived at a cavernous chamber dominated by a glowing holographic display. This is the prophecy of convergence, explained a bulbous, tentacled creature, an ancient text that speaks of a great unification of all sentient minds. As Dylan absorbed the alien's words, his blood ran cold. The scientist continued, describing Kelly's rare genetic trait her potential to influence entire populations telepathically. The convergence would have amplified her abilities exponentially, the alien said. She could have united every mind in the galaxy. That's why the Raymonds killed her, Dylan whispered, the pieces finally falling into place. But the revelations weren't over. A slender, crystalline being approached, holding a data pad. Commander Hayes, we've analyzed your genetic profile. You carry the same marker as your daughter. Dylan stumbled backward, his legs shaking. What? That's impossible. The trait is hereditary, the being explained. You are now the potential catalyst, and the convergence is approaching rapidly. Desperate for answers, Dylan agreed to undergo a risky procedure to awaken his latent abilities. He was strapped into a chair, dripping with electrodes and strange, pulsing crystals. This will be an unpleasant, warned one of the scientists. That was an understatement. As the machine activated, liquid fire coursed through Dylan's veins. His vision exploded with fractals of impossible color. He screamed, but no sound emerged. Suddenly he was reliving Kelly's final moments. He felt her terror, her confusion, and then an overwhelming sense of potential, of power beyond imagining. He saw through her eyes as the fabric of reality itself seemed to bend around her. The vision shifted. Dylan found himself suspended in an endless void, 
surrounded by countless pinpricks of light. Each one, he realized with growing horror, was a consciousness, billions upon billions of individual minds. As he watched, the lights began to merge, coalescing into a single blinding entity. In that moment, Dylan understood the full implications of the convergence. He came back to himself with a gasp, nearly falling out of the chair. His entire body trembled, and when he tried to speak, he tasted blood. What, what have you done to me? Dylan croaked. The avian scientist regarded him with a mix of awe and trepidation. We have awakened your potential, Commander. The choice of what to do with it is yours. Dylan looked down at his shaking hands. He could feel the power thrumming beneath his skin. The newfound connection to something vast and terrifying. The weight of an entire future of humanity pressed down upon him. I don't know if I can do this, he whispered. You must decide, the crystalline being urged. Embrace your role as catalyst and unite all beings, or reject the prophecy and face the consequences. Dylan closed his eyes, overwhelmed by the magnitude of the choice before him. The fate of every sentient being in the galaxy hung in the balance, and he, Dylan Hayes, would be the one to decide their future. Dylan paced the command deck of the captured Raymond flagship, his footsteps echoing in the cavernous space. The weight of his newfound power pressed down on him, a constant presence at the edges of his consciousness. He reached out with his mind, sensing the swirling thoughts and emotions of the crew, both human and Raymond, throughout the ship. Commander Hayes, a voice interrupted his brooding. It was Dr. Zenla, one of the few surviving scientists from the research facility. We need to discuss the implications of the convergence. Dylan turned to face the avian alien, whose feathers were ruffled with agitation. What's there to discuss? I still don't fully understand what I'm supposed to do. Dr. Zenla's large eyes blinked rapidly. The ancient texts speak of uniting all minds, but they're frustratingly vague on the details. It could mean anything from a temporary psychic link to a permanent merging of consciousness. Dylan ran a hand through his hair, frustration evident in every movement. And what happens to free will in either of those scenarios? I can't just make that choice for every sentient being in the galaxy. Before the scientists could respond, alarms blared throughout the ship. Lieutenant Chen's voice crackled over the comm system. Sir, we've got multiple incoming vessels. They're not responding to hails. Dylan sprinted to the main view screen, Dr. Zenla close behind. A swarm of sleek, angular ships were rapidly approaching, weapons already charged. Dissenters, Dylan growled. He opened a shipwide channel. All hands, battle stations, prepare for incoming fire. The first salvo from the dissenter ships rocked the flagship. Dylan gripped a nearby console to steady himself as the deck shuddered beneath his feet. Return fire, he ordered. Target their engines. I want them disabled, not destroyed. As the space around them erupted into chaos, Dylan felt a familiar presence at his side. It was Zorin the Riemann defector, his expression grim. They won't stop, you know, Zorin said, his gravelly voice barely audible over the sounds of battle. The dissenters fear change above all else. They'll hound you to the ends of the galaxy to prevent the convergence. Dylan nodded, his teeth clenched tight. Then we'll just have to be ready for them. The battle raged for hours, a brutal exchange of firepower and tactics. Dylan's forces managed to repel the attack, but at a heavy cost. As he surveyed the damage reports flooding in, a cold realization settled in his gut. He couldn't stay here, not with the Riemann Empire as his base. It was too obvious a target, and too many lives were at stake. They needed to go somewhere unexpected, somewhere they could regroup and plan their next move. Dylan called a meeting with his inner circle. Dr. Zenla, Zorin, and his most trusted human officers. As they gathered around the holographic display table, he laid out his plan. We're abandoning Rama Prime, he announced, his voice leaving no room for argument. We'll take what ships and resources we can and establish a hidden base in the outer rim. Protests erupted immediately, but Dylan silenced them with a raised hand. He felt the familiar tingle of psychic energy at his fingertips and pushed it down, unwilling to influence their minds even subconsciously. 
I know it's risky, he continued, but we can't defend an entire empire while trying to unravel the mysteries of the Convergence. We need time and secrecy. Zoran stepped forward, his reptilian features set in a scowl. And what of my people? We pledged our loyalty to you, Hayes. Dylan met the Reman's gaze unflinchingly. Any who wish to join us are welcome. The rest will be free to choose their own path. I won't force anyone to follow me into the unknown. As the others began to discuss logistics, Dylan felt a gentle touch on his arm. It was Dr. Zenla, her eyes filled with a mixture of concern and hope. What you're proposing is incredibly dangerous, she said softly. But it may be our best chance to understand your abilities and the true nature of the convergence. Dylan nodded, a wry smile tugging at the corner of his mouth. Dangerous is what we do best, Doctor. Now let's get to work. In the days that followed, Dylan's ragtag fleet prepared for their exodus. Ships were loaded with supplies. Scientists packed up vital research materials and a steady stream of volunteers, human, Riemann, and other allied species, joined their ranks. As Dylan stood on the bridge of his flagship, watching the last shuttle's dock, he felt a familiar presence brush against his mind. For a moment, he could almost see Kelly standing beside him, her hand in his. "'I hope I'm doing the right thing, sweetheart,' he whispered. The ship's engines hummed to life, and the stars outside began to blur. As they made the jump to hyperspace, Dylan couldn't shake the feeling that this was only the beginning of a much larger journey, one that would shape the fate of the entire galaxy. Uh, uh. The stark white walls of the medical facility seemed to close in around Dylan's motionless form. Machines beeped steadily, monitoring his vital signs as he lay in a catatonic state, his mind shattered by the brutal psychic battle with Malik. Dr. Zenla stood at Dylan's bedside, her feathers ruffled with concern as she studied the readouts on a nearby screen. His neural patterns are unlike anything I've ever seen, she murmured to the team of experts gathered around her. It's as if his consciousness has been fractured into a thousand pieces. For months, they worked tirelessly, poring over ancient texts and experimental treatments. Sleep-deprived researchers huddled over holographic displays, arguing over the interpretation of cryptic prophecies. It was during one such late-night session that Dr. Zenla made a breakthrough. Look at this! she exclaimed, her talons tapping excitedly on a weathered scroll. It speaks of a device called the Celestia Mind, said to possess the power to mend even the most grievous psychic injuries. Zorin, the defected Riemann commander, leaned in to examine the text. His reptilian eyes narrowed as he read, a promising lead, but it could be anywhere in the galaxy. How do we even begin to search for it? Tali, a brilliant young scientist with piercing green eyes, spoke up. We start with what we know. These prophecies often contain hidden clues. If we can decipher them, they might point us in the right direction. And so began their perilous quest. Zoran and Tali set out aboard a small, nondescript vessel following a trail of breadcrumbs across the stars. They landed on barren moons, decoding ancient glyphs carved into cliff faces. They dove into the depths of gas giants, battling crushing pressure to recover data crystals from long-abandoned research stations. On a jungle world teeming with predators, Zoran and Tali found themselves cornered by a pack of six-legged beasts with razor-sharp claws. Zoran fired his plasma rifle the smell of ozone filling the air as he cleared a path. Tali sprinted ahead, her boots squelching in the mud as they made a mad dash for their ship. As they lifted off, a dissenter cruiser dropped out of hyperspace, opening fire with a barrage of energy weapons. Zoran's hands flew across the controls, executing a series of evasive maneuvers that left Tali's stomach churning. They limped away, their hull scorched but intact. Days turned to weeks as they followed the trail, each clue bringing them closer to their goal. Finally, a breakthrough came in the form of an encrypted transmission intercepted from dissenter communications. Tali's eyes widened as she decoded the message. They're searching for something in the Cerulean Nebula. It has to be the Celestia Mind. Zoran plotted a course, his face grim. That nebula is a death trap. The radiation alone could fry our systems in minutes. 
but they pressed on, their ship shuddering as it plunged into the swirling blue-green gases of the nebula. Alarms blared as systems began to fail. Tali worked feverishly to keep their shields operational, while Zoran navigated the treacherous gravitational eddies that threatened to tear them apart. Through it all, they emerged on the other side, battered but alive. Before them loomed a desolate moon, its surface scarred by ancient impact craters. As they touched down, Tali's scanners pinpointed a massive underground structure. They descended into the ruins, the air thick with dust and the echoes of a long-dead civilization. At the heart of the complex, they found it, the Celestia Mind, a towering monolith of gleaming metal and pulsing energy, with a miniature black hole suspended at its core. Tali approached the control panel, her fingers hovering over the alien interface. This is it. With this, we can save Dylan and ensure the convergence. But before she could activate the device, a familiar voice rang out. I'm afraid I can't let you do that. Malak stepped from the shadows, his eyes blazing with psychic energy. Malak's eyes blazed with psychic energy as he faced down Zoran and Tali. The air crackled with tension the ancient ruins around them seeming to pulse with an eerie light. You're too late, Malik sneered, his voice dripping with contempt. The Celestia mind belongs to the dissenters now. Zoran raised his plasma rifle, his scaled fingers tightening on the trigger. We'll see about that. The ensuing firefight lit up the cavernous chamber. Plasma bolts sizzled through the air, leaving scorch marks on the ancient walls. Tali ducked behind a fallen pillar, her fingers flying over her data pad as she worked to activate the Celestia mind. Zoran provided cover fire, his aim true as he forced Malak to retreat. But the dissenter leader was far from beaten. With a gesture, he sent a wave of psychic force crashing into Zoran, sending the Riemann flying across the room. Zoran! Tali cried out, her eyes wide with horror as she saw her companion's crumpled form. The distraction was all Malak needed. He lunged for the Celestia Mind's control panel, his fingers mere inches from the activation sequence. But Zoran wasn't done. With a Herculean effort, he dragged himself to his feet and threw himself at Malak. The two went down in a tangle of limbs, grappling for control. Tali now, Zoran roared, pinning Malak to the ground. Tali sprinted to the control panel, her heart pounding in her chest. She input the final command, and the Celestia Mind hummed to life. A blinding light erupted from the device, bathing the chamber in its otherworldly glow. Malak howled in fury, but it was too late. The Celestia Mind's energy engulfed them all, and the world faded to white. Weeks later, Dylan's eyes fluttered open. The stark white ceiling of the medical bay swam into focus, and he became aware of the soft beeping of monitoring equipment. Welcome back, Commander, Dr. Zenla said softly, her feathered face coming into view. How do you feel? Dylan tried to sit up, but his limbs felt like lead. Like I've been hit by a Riemann battlecruiser. He croaked, his voice rough from disuse. What happened? Dr. Zenla helped him into a sitting position, adjusting the bed. The Celestia mind healed your fractured psyche, but the process was intense. Your body is still recovering. As the fog in his mind cleared, Dylan reached out with his thoughts, trying to sense the familiar hum of his psychic abilities. To his dismay, he felt only the faintest flicker of power. My abilities, he began, a note of panic in his voice. They're diminished, but not gone, Dr. Zenla assured him. With time and practice, we believe they'll return to full strength. Dylan nodded, processing this information. Then a thought struck him. Zoran and Tali, did they make it back? Dr. Zenla's expression fell, and Dylan felt a cold dread settle in his stomach. Tali returned safely, she said gently. But Zoran, he sacrificed himself to ensure the mission's success. I'm so sorry, Dylan. The news hit Dylan like a physical blow. He closed his eyes, remembering Zoran's unwavering loyalty, his dry humor, the way he'd stood by Dylan's side through countless battles. He saved us all, Dylan whispered, his voice thick with emotion. Yes, he did. Dr. Zenla agreed, and now we must honor his sacrifice by seeing this through. As if on cue, Tali entered the room, her face lighting up when she saw Dylan awake. 
Commander, thank the stars you're all right. Dylan managed a weak smile. Thanks to you and Zorin, I hear I owe you both my life. Tali's expression sobered. Zorin's loss, it's a heavy price, but we can't let it be in vain. She pulled up a holographic display, her tone urgent. The convergence is approaching faster than we anticipated. We need to unite the galaxy, and soon. Dylan absorbed this information, his mind already racing with plans and strategies. Despite his weakened state, he felt a fierce commitment building within him. Then we'd better get to work, he said, swinging his legs over the side of the bed. We've got a galaxy to save. In the days that followed, Dylan pushed himself to the limit, rebuilding his strength and honing what remained of his psychic abilities. He pored over reports, made countless transmissions to potential allies, and worked tirelessly to forge a coalition strong enough to stand against the dissenters. As news of Dylan's recovery spread, support for his cause swelled. Representatives from dozens of worlds pledged their allegiance, drawn by the promise of unity in the face of the coming convergence. But Malik and his dissenters weren't going down without a fight. Reports flooded in of attacks on Dylan's allies, of worlds falling to dissenter influence. In the command center of their hidden base, Dylan stood before a massive star map, plotting their next move. Tali and Dr. Zenla flanked him, along with representatives from their growing alliance. We can't let them keep picking us apart, Dylan said, his voice firm. It's time to take the fight to them. A Riemann general, his scales gleaming in the low light, stepped forward. My people stand ready, Commander. In Zoran's memory, we will follow you into battle. Dylan nodded, feeling the weight of their trust. He turned to address the assembled leaders, his voice ringing with conviction. We strike at dawn. Prepare your fleets. Today we begin the final push to unite the galaxy. As the others filed out to make preparations, Dylan remained, staring at the star map. The enormity of what lay ahead threatened to overwhelm him. Then, unbidden, a memory of Kelly surfaced, her laughter, her unwavering faith in him. Drawing strength from that memory, Dylan squared his shoulders. I won't let you down, he whispered, to Kelly, to Zorin, to all those counting on him. Whatever it takes, we'll see this through. With renewed purpose, Dylan strode from the command center. The final battle for the galaxy's future loomed on the horizon, and he intended to meet it head on. The world of Ithoria pulsed with energy as Dylan stood atop the central spire of the newly established command hub. The air crackled with psychic potential, a tangible force that sent shivers down his spine. Below him, a sea of beings from across the galaxy gathered, their minds linked in a fragile network of hope and grit. Dylan closed his eyes, reaching out with his thoughts to touch the consciousness of each individual present. He felt their fears, their doubts, their lingering mistrust. With gentle persistence, he projected calm and unity, reinforcing the shared vision of a harmonious future. We stand on the precipice of a new era, Dylan's voice rang out both audibly and telepathically. The convergence will test us, but together we are stronger than any force in the universe. As he spoke, a ripple of unease passed through the crowd. Dylan sensed it immediately. A pocket of resistance, minds closed off to his influence. He zeroed in on a group of Zarthian delegates, their tentacled faces twisted with skepticism. You speak of unity, human, one of them rasped. But how can we trust that this convergence won't strip us of our individuality, our very essence? Dylan descended from the spire, approaching the Zarthians with open hands. Your concerns are valid, he said softly. Let me show you what I've seen. With their permission, he linked his mind to theirs, sharing visions of a future where diverse species worked in harmony, their unique strengths amplified by their connections. The Zarthians' doubts began to fade, replaced by cautious optimism. But even as Dylan worked to maintain cohesion among his allies, a new threat emerged from the shadows. Reports flooded in from across the galaxy, acts of sabotage, whispered prophecies of doom, entire populations turning against the Alliance. 
In the command center, Dylan poured over holographic star charts with Tali and Dr. Zenla. Red markers indicated trouble spots, spreading like a virus across the map. It's the Watcher, Tali said, her voice tight with frustration. Their followers are everywhere, preaching that the convergence will bring destruction, not unity. Dylan's fists clenched. We need to find the source. Cut off the head of this movement before it tears us apart. For weeks, they chased leads across star systems, always one step behind the enigmatic watcher. Dylan led covert operations, clashing with fanatics in the neon-lit underbellies of sprawling space stations and on the harsh surfaces of frontier worlds. Finally, a breakthrough came. Dylan's strike team traced the Watcher's transmissions to a hidden base on a desolate moon. As they approached in stealth shuttles, Dylan sensed a familiar psychic presence, twisted, corrupted, but undeniably tied to the ancient facility where the Celestia Mint had been found. The raid was swift and brutal. Dylan's enhanced abilities allowed him to counter the Watcher's followers, incapacitating them with targeted psychic bursts. As they fought their way to the heart of the complex, the truth revealed itself in fragments of shattered memories and corrupted data streams. The Watcher had once been a brilliant scientist, pushing the boundaries of psychic research, but exposure to dark energies had fractured their mind leaving them convinced that the Convergence would unleash an ancient evil. In the central chamber, Dylan came face to face with the Watcher, a withered figure, more machine than organic, surrounded by pulsing conduits of psychic energy. Their eyes met, and in that instant, Dylan felt the full force of the Watcher's madness and despair. You don't understand, the Watcher's voice echoed in Dylan's mind. I've seen it. The hunger that waits beyond the veil. You'll doom us all. With a surge of power, the Watcher launched a psychic assault that threatened to tear Dylan's consciousness apart. He staggered, feeling the fragile bonds of his allied force beginning to splinter under the onslaught. Desperate, Dylan reached out to the vast network of minds he had cultivated. He drew upon their collective strength, their hopes and fears, their triumphs and losses. The memories of countless beings flooded through him, lovers embracing on alien shores, children gazing in wonder at starlit skies, warriors standing defiant in the face of impossible odds. Empowered by this shared legacy of all sentient life, Dylan pushed back against the Watcher's attack. Their minds grappled across the vastness of space, reality itself seeming to warp and bend around them. With a final titanic effort, Dylan shattered the Watcher's defenses. The rogue scientist's mind collapsed, their body slumping lifeless to the ground as their psychic presence winked out of existence. As the echo of the battle faded, Dylan became aware of a deep, pervasive exhaustion. He looked around at his team, seeing the same bone-deep weariness reflected in their eyes. They had won, but at a terrible cost. Alarms blared throughout the facility. Tali's voice crackled over the comm, filled with urgency. Dylan, we need to get out of here now. The convergence, it's happening. They stumbled to their feet, rushing back to their shuttles as reality itself began to distort around them. The fabric of space-time rippled and tore, revealing glimpses of other dimensions, other possibilities. As they lifted off from the moon's surface, Dylan felt a sense of creeping dread. They had defeated the Watcher united the galaxy, and prepared as best they could for this moment. But as the convergence reached its peak, and the very foundations of reality trembled, he couldn't shake the fear that their greatest challenge still lay ahead. Ahead. The shuttle's viewscreen filled with a kaleidoscope of fractured realities, each shard revealing glimpses of alternate timelines and parallel dimensions. Dylan gripped the controls, his squeezing hard with exertion. Brace yourselves, he shouted as reality itself bucked and heaved around them. Tali clung to her seat, her eyes wide with fear and awe. By the stars, she whispered. It's tearing everything apart. The shuttle lurched violently, systems screaming in protest as the fabric of space-time warped and twisted. Through the chaos, Dylan saw entire worlds being ripped asunder, civilizations crumbling in an instant. We can't let it end like this, he growled, his mind racing. 
With steadfast perseverance, he reached out with his psychic senses, feeling the collective consciousness of his allies, a fragile web of unity stretched to its breaking point. In that moment, Dylan made his choice. He unbuckled his harness and stood, facing his companions. I'm going to anchor it, he said, his voice steady despite the fear clawing at his gut. Channel it all through me. Dylan, no, Tally cried, reaching for him. It'll kill you. But he was already moving, placing his hands on the shuttle's hull. Dylan closed his eyes and opened his mind wide, becoming a conduit for the raging energies of the convergence. The effect was immediate and devastating. Dylan's body contorted, racked with unimaginable pain as cosmic forces surged through him. His skin crackled with energy, hair turning white, then disintegrating. Bones creaked and muscles withered as decades seemed to pass in seconds. Through it all, Dylan fought to maintain control, desperately trying to contain the maelstrom within his fracturing psyche. Visions assaulted him, countless possible futures, the deaths of billions, the birth and death of entire universes. Just as he felt his sanity slipping away, a familiar presence bloomed within his mind. Dad, Kelly's voice echoed, a beacon of warmth in the chaos. I'm here. We can do this together. Tears streamed down Dylan's ravaged face as he felt his daughter's essence merge with his own. With renewed focus, he began to weave order from the chaos, stabilizing the cosmic distortions and anchoring them within himself. The shuttle's occupants watched in horror and awe as Dylan's physical form began to lose cohesion, becoming translucent and ethereal. Thank you, he managed to whisper, looking at each of his allies in turn. For everything. With a final surge of effort, Dylan contained the last of the destructive energies. There was a blinding flash of light, and then... silence. When vision returned, Dylan was gone. Where he had stood, only empty space remained. The view screen showed a galaxy at peace, the convergence contained. Tali slumped in her seat, her voice barely a whisper. He did it. He saved us all. As the shuttle limped back to their base, news of Dylan's sacrifice spread across the Allied worlds. Beings of all races gathered in solemn vigil, united in grief and gratitude. On countless worlds, monuments rose to honor the human who had given everything to forge a path to unity. Holographic displays showed Dylan's likeness, while orators recounted his deeds. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, Please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.